I'm Jason with Born Handy, and uh, you know I mentioned in one of my earlier videos that I had bought a new house. There were going to be some projects coming along. Man, a lot's happened. A lot has happened in between when I purchased and now. I've quit my official full-time job, went into business 100% for myself. That takes a lot of time, effort, money. Um, money. <laughs> so this this property it was not a fixer-upper. It was not a fixer-upper, but man, did the projects just keep piling in and so yeah it's a little bit of an older house it has a few issues but nothing that i would say made me believe that we were walking into a major major project but as it turns out we were <laughs> i'm spinning around right now here in some land that i attempted to clear by hand when i first purchased the property and you can see the area that i cleared by hand and i did this with a chainsaw and hooking a chain to my truck wrapping that chain around smaller trees and just backing them out of the ground I actually had a neighbor across the way who has a backhoe who came and dug some of the larger stumps for me. Thank you for that, Mr. Campbell. But I will tell you, uh, between all of the other things going on, the projects, the business, just work in general, life, having children, I could tell that clearing this property out was going to take me a lifetime. As luck would have it, I actually had a guy here cutting some dead trees for me. He mentions to me that he has a piece of equipment that could make pretty short work of clearing this area. He could see the efforts that I was making. He didn't laugh at me or anything, although he, you know, in retrospect, he was probably just holding it in, trying to be polite. I ended up a little while later having him come back and do some work for me. And let me tell you, I'm happy that I did. I wanted to give you a quick close up of the cutting teeth. Okay, Rita, you can. We're being, <laughs> being photobombed. These teeth right here, uh, man, they seem to go through dirt, wood, vines, rock, gravel. I'm not sure what their limits are, but they absolutely made short work of most everything over here. I don't have a ton of footage showing uh, it actually happening because it was going on during my peak season. But what I do have is a lot of before and after shots, and I can kind of give you a general idea of how, how things went with the project. Here you can kind of see what the woods looked like before he started and man, it was so thick you'd almost describe it as a jungle <laughs> it was hard you couldn't hardly walk through it there were some nasty nasty briars that you know you walk through like something like blackberries and it snags in your blue jeans and you can generally just kind of power right on through that and get a few pokes in your leg but uh, these thorns here would just tear your pants up <laughs> so the idea that i would get out there and just chop away at this stuff Man, it just wasn't happening. So yeah, it was property that I owned, but it really wasn't good for very much, except just kind of being sort of my own little private wildlife sanctuary. One of the other reasons we wanted to get this done is, uh, well, I have small children and I want them to grow up how I grew up. I, and maybe that sounds nostalgic and nerdy to some of you, but it was really important to me that they do little things like catch lightning bugs, play hide and seek as they get older, maybe play some paintball, that kind of thing. Uh, but they're at the age now where it's just fun to go outside and play, you know, pretend things. <laughs> and and the woods before were just not good for that. It was easy for them to go out and not be very far in them at all and completely be out of sight. Now, in addition to just some brush, this property was hit by a major tornado in 2011. And then again, a much smaller tornado, but still a lot of damage in 2012. And there were a ton of trees down and we needed something to kind of clear those things out of the way in addition to all of the brush and other things that were on the ground. He had me come through and mark a few trees that I wanted to keep. He brings that equipment out through here and anything under about seven inches that I didn't mark, that machine just gobbled up like it was being paid money for it. Because it was. <laughs> when he was finished, there was a lot of debris. These were things that were too small to really be chipped up into little bitty fine powdery bits. My neighbor just had a big rake on his tractor. He brought it out here, drove it around in a few circles. We made a handful of piles, and uh, we've been under a burn ban, so he hadn't burned much of it, but it's been composting down pretty nicely, and I figure in another year or two, I'm going to have some fantastic compost left out of that. And while we're here, let me take a minute to point out just how different the mulched area looks as compared to the areas that have not been touched. I, I did attempt to plant some grass, but with the drought, it just didn't really take. But I'm certain that uh, we're going to have a real pretty area next year because as winter began to set in, 
these grass seeds that I had lost sight of were beginning to sprout and grow. It's going to be tough to get grass to grow under a tree canopy like this one, but uh, you know there are grass species that do better and it will survive for much longer in conditions like this. So we, we did select a grass species like that, fescue. Should do fairly well out here. We also had them cut a trail around the perimeter of the property. You know, we've gone from having a big chunk of woods that was kind of hard to walk around in. It was nice to have, nice to own. It was almost unusable to now having a very large, very usable, very well shaded backyard and our very own nature trail. And we tried to do some of this stuff with a tractor and although the tractor was pretty good at what it was able to do, it didn't leave us with what I would consider, you know, ready for sod kind of yard. The mulcher left, still had to be raked and cleaned, but it, once you ran a rake across it, it was ready to use. With the tractor, we still were going to have to spend a lot of time pulling small stumps. So although the tractor was usable and helped to make some of the initial trails, it is nothing compared to what this mulcher was able to do. So what this video is really about is, I guess we'll just have to think of it as sort of a public service announcement because I didn't know a piece of equipment like this existed. And when I bought this property, I wasn't sure how I was gonna get all that done. I just kind of went after it with the chainsaw and a truck as I described earlier. That wasn't the best approach. It's just the best approach we knew about at the time. A big part of my subscriber base, a lot of those guys are homesteading and have bought property that needs to be cleared. So. Yeah, I'm just kind of saying, hey, if, if you're like me and didn't know, this is my public service announcement to you. <laughs> this is not an official endorsement. There, he, he didn't pay me any money. The only money that changed hands was when I paid him for the work that he did. And I have to say that for the, you know, the YouTube algorithm. They want to know that for monetization policy. But uh, I was really happy with what he did. I was really impressed with the machinery. And another thing I'll say, at least the guy that I used, tell that he was proud of what he does and he was proud of his equipment and that matters but at least in my experience when you have someone who just looks at everything as a tool and what they're doing is just a job you can get a good job out of that person from time to time but more often than not they're just there to collect a paycheck and move on this guy actually took a lot of pride in what he did and was happy uh, to show off and when I told him I was probably gonna make a video of what he was doing he was pretty thrilled about that so all that being said, if you find yourself in the North Alabama area, I'll put a link to his information down in the description. I would encourage you to look him up. I've been very satisfied with what he did for me. Until next time, this is Jason with Ford Handy, and I hope to see you in the next video.